Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you. Tonight I was going to do a little bit of uh, a few videos talking about the upcoming TNA pay-per-view uh, going on. I know in the YWC on, on my Twitter account there was some uproar with a lot of people thinking that the uh, upcoming uh, pay-per-view was tonight on Sunday. I know a lot of people aren't really talking about uh, TNA. They just knew that there was a, a show coming up and, and they had sort of lost track if it was going to be uh, today or if it was going to be next Sunday. Well, it is going to be on Sunday is the day that this is going down. It's sort of weird to me because like after Bound for Glory, there's a long stretch of time without a TNA actual real pay-per-view. They do the Spike TV specials and it just seems like it just seems like the pay-per-views are just coming like snap, snap, snap with uh, uh, Sacrifice uh, just feeling like it was just the other week and now here we are at, at Slammiversary. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's not a lot of people talking about TNA unless people are talking about TNA going out of business. I know one of the real big talks going around is if they're going to get a new TV deal out there from uh, uh, Spike TV or if they're going to be moving over to another uh, company. Some people out there have this sort of... Uh, thought that Jeff Jarrett did a sneak in with Global Force, but I guess one of the things about him being a co-owner of TNA still, without, uh, with him not selling his stock to leave and go start a new company, was that he was not going to negotiate with Spike TV. Uh, he was going to go out and try and find his new deal. Of course, everybody knows that to him and the, uh, like, I don't know if it's a secret partner or a silent partner in Toby Keith. Uh, most people have them rumored signing with uh, CMT going on Country Music Television Network and uh, and starting up there. But I've also heard that uh, it's not even going to be a real wrestling company right off the bat. It's going to be a reality show leading into how to open up a wrestling company. And once the, you know, the reality show runs its course, it's going to debut with uh, some sort of a big global force wrestling show and they'll build from there um haven't really heard any about any big names signing there but maybe with the reality show it's going to be maybe like an ultimate fighter sort of deal where you get used to seeing the guys like that and that's how they build them up and make them stars i, I still think that if you want us to care you have to have somebody on there um that it re it's really going to matter about uh, i know uh, a lot of people are talking about these low attendance numbers at, at recent uh House shows uh, with, uh, I believe it was either Friday night or Saturday night, there was a baseball show um, where they do the uh, baseball, uh, where they have the field out there at home plate and everybody sort of sits in the stands and, and watches what's going down. And um, Normally, everybody takes a picture at a show. I know when I went to Bound for Glory, I took a, a picture as soon as I got to my seat and I posted on Twitter for a, a, a you know a funny ha ha sort of laugh. But look what's going down, and a lot of other people do this. You know when they go to house shows, and most of the time it's taken before the actual show starts. When they these pictures were taken, there's a match going on in the ring. So you're gonna think of most people that want to go to the wrestling show that paid to get a ticket to get in there. When the matches are going to go on, they're going to be in their seats. Some people might go to the bathroom. Some people might go to the concession stand. But a good number of people are going to be sitting in those seats because that's what they paid for. They paid there to sit to watch wrestling. And this is the first time with TNA shows, you know, you know, people posting pictures of low attendance numbers that um, – there was actual match going on, and the, the number that uh, I heard through Wrestling Observer podcast this morning was uh, 200 paid, and that's just horrible. If I was TNA, I would be dumping tickets all over town for people to get in there because you know when people get there, you're gonna get your split of the concession stand money. Who's gonna go and not buy a hot dog and a coke? You're gonna get people wanting to buy a T-shirt, people wanting to buy a program uh, for when they meet the wrestlers. There's money to be made once people get in there, even if they don't pay to get their ticket, which is probably one of the biggest things to get there to make sure they meet their guarantee that they're not losing money on this show with renting the field and paying the wrestlers and paying insurance and you know just everything that goes along I, I know they don't pay a lot of money for promotion it's one of the biggest reasons that people say you know the wrestlers show up in the towns and they go to the gyms they're in there working out and somebody walks up to the wrestler and they say hey man what's going on and the wrestler says you going to the show tonight and people look at them like I didn't even know you were going to be in town like you know TNA goes to a town they don't even really know what's going down but um I don't know. I mean, I was sort of surprised when I went over to the Wikipedia page. They already have seven matches named uh, for the show, starting with Austin Aries versus Kenny King, Samoa Joe versus Bobby Lashley, Willow versus Magnus, Mr. Anderson against James Storm, which seems like it should be a good match, with them sort of feuding back and forth about just being like the who they like to fight and basically, you know, you know, who can drink the most beer. They had a drinking contest. And uh, we, we saw... Um, 
Mr. Anderson, you know, dress up like James and, and they brawled around and yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, that, that should be a good match. And that's probably the match of the night, but, uh, on the card is going to be the Von Erichs, uh, Marshall, and Ross making their TNA debut. I'm honestly going to tell you that I don't know a lot about these guys, basically. Um, they're going to be wrestling uh, anybody. It hasn't been announced who they're going to be. My my guess is they would be wrestling against the Wolves uh, for the championship. Um, they have said that um, uh, Kevin Von Erich, the last living member of the Von Erich family, uh, is going to be there in their corner, uh, you know, managing uh, his sons. These guys have been over in uh, pro wrestling. Noah, uh, they went through the dojo over there. They were trained by their dad. They were tra uh, trained by Harley Race. And um, I don't know. I I've heard that these guys aren't great. I think that a lot of this is being built around Slammiversary being held in Texas, thinking that the Von Erich name is going to mean something to the people in Arlington. They're going to want to go out and support them. I think that they were, you know, a big deal, you know, 20, 30 years ago, but I don't think there's any wrestling fans out there that are going to be sitting on their seats, like, thinking that, uh, you know, two guys are going to tag up that they've never seen on television before, and it's going to mean anything. Um, I know that, you know, when Reed was out there, um, starting his career, people were going and showing up to the shows because Reed Flair was wrestling there. But it was also because if you think of how big they turned out, you know, for uh, Reed's first show, you know, Hulk Hogan was a special guest referee. Ric Flair was the manager. I believe they met, they, they, um, managed, uh, I'm sorry, they wrestled against the Nasty Boys. They put a lot of name recognition into being there. And we can all see that TNA isn't enough name recognition in order to sell them. They can put them in there against guys like Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards. It really isn't going to matter in the long run uh, because no one's even going to know that they're going to be there. Um, if these guys were that great, honestly, I think they would still be making a name for themselves over in Pro Wrestling Noah. I think that more than likely this is just TNA falling back on their whole thing that they don't want to pay the wrestlers that much. That's why we've seen the big names of AJ Styles leave. We've seen Chris Sabin leave. Uh, on the outs right now is um, you know Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. All of these guys are big names that you sort of built the company of TNA. And uh, you know now instead of you know paying these guys thousands of dollars a night, they're going to be you know wrestling for two to three hundred dollars or, or whatever it's going to be on the lower end and these guys seem to sort of fit into that thing that they're just sort of happy to have a job they're happy to be on tv and hoping that tna is the company that can be you know moving forward and, and staying alive i'm not looking for a lot of this this match but it honestly could be something that does surprise me like i said i don't know a lot about these guys i just know that they're going to be wanting to go out there and try and make the biggest name they can uh, in their debut match for tna so that's going to be the first match that i talk about and we'll go on to the next one